Hi guys, welcome back to Creep Designs by Twitch. If you're wondering why I'm sitting down at this angle, it's because I've just finished recording the outro for this video. I'm doing it backwards because things have changed a bit. Okay, so I was originally just doing this video for the spring cleanup challenge hosted by Sab from Sab's Rehabs, but then we found out that the Ugly Duckling Challenge hosted by Corey is the day after the Spring Cleanup Challenge and both hosts are more than happy for people to double up on the challenges so this video will be for both challenges. I've just got to mention both hosts and both challenges in the intro and outro and the description but it's all good. So if anyone comes out of saying that it's cheating, it's not cheating because it's okay by both hosts. Okay, so now the proper details. Uh, so the first challenge is the spring cleanup challenge hosted by Sab from Sab's Rehabs and the aim of the game is to get a piece of furniture from the curbside and fix it up. Here in Australia we don't really have as much curbside stuff as you guys do on the other side of the pond so it's a little harder for us to find something that's on the curbside we also don't really do that whole thing where you like go and set up a tripod on the side of the road and record yourself picking up the furniture everyone would be out there what is she doing what's going on how is that yeah sabrina was more than happy for us to find something for free on marketplace and utilize that we just have to take a screenshot and show proof that it was in fact free so here is my proof so that's one challenge the other challenge is the ugly duckling challenge hosted by Corey from desert diy and the aim of that game is to take something ugly obviously and make it pretty um i don't really think i've made it pretty but you'll see um yeah <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. But anyway, um, if you're not already on the challenge playlists, I will put both links in the description of this video. You do not have to watch my video twice. If you've watched it in the first one, just skip over it in the second one. Um, anyway, this one's going to be fun. I think it's going to be fun anyway. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be fun and crazy. And, and let's do it. Okay, so here she is, uh, she was free from Marketplace, like I said, and the lady even delivered it for me for free. So that meets the criteria for this spring cleanup challenge, but it is also ugly, like super ugly and broken and busted. So it definitely also meets the criteria for the ugly duckling challenge. First thing I always do is get rid of literally everything that is not staying. If I'm not using it on the piece, it goes. I will save anything that I might be able to use on future projects or might be even be able to reuse on this piece, but otherwise it goes in the rubbish. I started going to remove this little pocket shelf thingy, but the screws are absolutely stuffed, so I was like, stuff it, that can stay. I was going to take this quick minute to say thank you to Marcy for supporting me through the Buy Me A Coffee app. Uh, very much appreciate it. If anyone else is interested in supporting me this way, you can find the link in the description. These plastic fake wood grain handles were destined for the bin but they have been claimed and will be getting sent off this weekend to Miki at Shabby Chic and Co. So hopefully they will get reused again. So I needed to plug this big hole from where the previous lock mechanism was and I'm using a wooden handle or a wooden knob to plug the hole because I like to avoid filling things like this with Bondo as much as I can. I'm using a hole saw on my drill to make the hole big enough for the handle to go into. 
the other reason I prefer doing it this way is because it is a good way to use up materials that you would otherwise just be throwing in the bin. So like paintbrush handles that you might have cut off, I've done that in the past. I save them and use them to plug the holes. Um, and the other thing is this dries so much faster than waiting for a big chunk of Bondo to dry. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you plug a big hole with a knob. Now I needed to cut a new top for the top of this, obviously, and I've got this tabletop that was my old workbench. The outer edges are badly weather damaged, but the middle of the top is perfectly fine and I was able to cut a new top from this. I had a really hard time cutting this up because my circular saw apparently has decided it really doesn't want to do its job and kept stopping. Okay, so I kind of got a little off track with everything. My original plan wasn't going to work so I re-jigged some things. Um, the main reason is because I was trying to raise it up higher. You raise me up. Um, so the, the drop saw is up at a good height for me to work at. Um, and it just wasn't going to work the way I was going to do it. So this is what I've done instead and I have not recorded any of it because it's a complete mishmash of stuff that I had laying around that was destined to go to the dump but now I've used parts of it so it's not all going to completely go to waste and I'll tell you what I'm calling this piece once I'm done showing you. Okay so this is where we're at. <laughs> um, first of all I'll open the cupboard cupboard sticks a little bit. I've got to rejig some things. Uh, the cupboard has a shelf in it. I've only put one shelf in for now because I don't know what exactly I'm going to be putting in there. Um, and I will cut a second one at some point to put on that base so that it's full, but it will have to be inset a bit to account for those. Thinking of hanging some things in here for uh, my hand saws to go. I've got the hiccups. Um, that drawer doesn't want to go in. Still need to sand that one. So you'll recognize these. I cut the drawers out of um, two tops that I took off previous dresses. So these ones are off Big Red. And these ones are off the leopard print dresser, I think. That is wrong. They were originally from a top that was meant to go with this piece, but I didn't use it. This top's not attached yet. I had to cut a new top for it because once I put this on, I realized that the first piece I cut wasn't going to be big enough. So I've cut a new top. I'm going to try and move this without dropping it. Okay. <laughs> it's an absolute mess. Um, so I've put it back on the drawers so that they don't sink down into that hole. Um, I've attached these posts here with brackets and patched it up with these side pieces. And yeah, and this top will get attached. Um, okay, so nothing's perfect on this. Like, look at this. That's terrible. The drawers look horrible. I was going to fill these, all these holes and gaps and stuff with Bondo. I'm like, hold up. Wait a minute. I would like to introduce Frankenbench. So I'm going to go super funky with this and just embrace the patchiness of it and how horrible it looks. 
and I'm going to give it a look that is truly unique and will fit right in in my workshop. Now whilst I am going to be going for a very uneven and rough finish on this there is laminate and veneer and bondo all over this thing so I do want to start with a solid even canvas so I'm using Cartamelli primer and adhesive bond to help make sure that my paint sticks and also to give me like I said a nice even canvas to start with. Now I'm going in with Cartamelli Mineral Paint in the colour Cup of Joe. This is going to be my base colour for some texture. In hindsight I really didn't need to do this because my original plan for the texture really didn't work out that well, but you will see. So for my first attempt at adding texture this, to this piece, I put some Cup of Joe into my roller tray and added plaster of Paris to it to make it thick and goopy. Then I used a plastic scraper to kind of smear it and dab it on there. Some of this texture probably does actually show through in the original, in the, sorry, in the final finish, but it just wasn't quite as pronounced as I wanted it to be. So those of you who are familiar with my channel will know that this is a brand new spray gun and today I'm using it with mint mineral paint in the colour Bushwalking. I used this on a previous piece and I absolutely love this colour and I have enough left over to do this piece so that is what I'm doing. Um, this spray gun works so smoothly, I'm so happy with it. If you want any, want my thoughts on it and my unpacking of it, uh, I will put the link for that video in the description. But super happy with it and it sprayed so well with mint mineral paint. So this is my second attempt at adding texture and this time I had a little bit of the mint mineral paint left in the tin so I added plaster of Paris to that made it super 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 thick and goopy and chunky and used a brush to just stipple it on in random patterns. It looks gross. It looks like some kind of fungal infection but just trust me because it works out in the end and this time it was so much better. Once that's all completely dry I then grab my metal scraper and just scrape it across the top of all of that texture just to rough it up and yeah make it a little bit more highlighted I guess I don't know I can't really explain it but you see what it's doing now I am doing a black wash so this is just Cartamelli black bear mineral paint um, mixed with some water and I'm just brushing it on and letting it drip down into all those little nooks and crannies and the little holes are getting some love as well and adding little drippy drips everywhere not too much just enough a little concerned at this point because it's very dark but it'll get better It wasn't runny enough for me and it wasn't like messy enough so I grabbed my misting bottle and misted all of that drippiness and helped it move a bit more and made it a bit more fluid and it worked out so much better. Whilst you're enjoying this drippy drip action I just want to take a minute to say a huge thank you to everyone who's joined my membership program Twitch's Bloody Legends. 
you guys rock. I am so glad to have you with me and I really appreciate you guys joining me. If anyone else is interested, there is a video link in the description that will explain the membership and all its perks. All right, I was a little concerned about how dark the run marks were in the black, but as you can see now that it's dried, it is nowhere near as dark. Happy with it so far. Um, trust the process. I'm saying that to myself, not you, because I'm a little concerned. So at this point I had an idea and I wanted to do a little experimenting. So I'm sacrificing my Old Faithful misting bottle and I'm adding some really watery cup of joe and the plan was to use this to do a wash all over it and it was a little darker than I was expecting but it actually worked out really well because it gives it like a spray painted look and I actually was really really happy with it and really excited and I maybe went a little bit crazy with it but was super happy with how it turned out and you should have a go at this because it's so fun and it kind of expands your horizons with what you can do because you can make your own colours for this and go for gold. Once I did some of that all over the piece, I then added more water to it to thin it down more and then did that original wash that I wanted to do all over it and it just, it's getting better. I was planning on doing the top the same as the base, but I opted to just paint it black. Okay, so I really wanted to grunge this piece up and decided I wanted to create my own tag for Twitch and put that on the front of it. And this is me psyching myself up to do it. By this point I had practiced it like 15 times and just couldn't get it the way I wanted it and I just didn't have the balls to do it and I was trying to just psych myself into just doing it. And I was so happy with that that I had to give it a little friend on the side, so have a smiley face. Once everything was completely dry, I went over everything with clear wax 
and then went over the top of that with black wax. Going in with the clear wax first gives you a bit more control over how much of that black wax seeps and holds onto the paint. Um, and you can always go in with more black wax once you've buffed it and tidied it and left it to sit. This is just me quickly showing the difference between the side with black wax on it and the side that hasn't got any wax on it at all and the difference that it makes and it really shows up that texture a lot more. So I could have used all brand new handles on this piece and it would have looked great but I like the fact that so far everything I've used on this had been free or salvaged from junk and all of these knobs and handles that I've used are out of a drawer full of random bits and pieces that have come off old furniture or pieces that I just don't like and that just keeps going with the free or salvaged theme that's going on here and I am very happy with the finished look. Okay, so I just remembered that I was going to do some like stitches in certain places on this because the whole premise of this turned into like Frankenbench, so kind of like Frankenstein because it's all patched together. Um, so I'm not going to do heaps because there's already heaps going on with it, but I'm just using some rub and buff in gold leaf and a brush. So I'm going to do some here. And I'm not going to make them perfect. I'm just making sure they are actually noticeable. Now here is a quick reminder of what it looked like before, peeling and ugly and brown and just not nice at all. And as my seven year old son would say, boom! So here he is, definitely not pretty, but usable and not brown and fits right in with my workshop. I mean look at the staging wall it's all rusty and corrugated and you know I love it I just love it so much and you know it's right up my alley I think my favorite part is definitely the tags especially twitch I mean it's my tag now it'll be my thing I'm going to start off by saying this isn't going to be for everyone um, and you know what it's not for everyone I'm not selling it this is mine I'm keeping it 
for as long as I can handle having one more thing taking up space in my workshop. Um, I tried new things on this and discovered new techniques for myself that I will definitely be using again. Uh, don't forget to check the description for all products used as well as all my other links. Thank you to Sabrina from Sabs Rehabs for hosting the Spring Cleanup Challenge. It's been an absolute blast and I look forward to the next Spring Challenge. And thank you to Corey from Desert DIY for hosting the Ugly Duckling Challenge again. Um, I know the aim of the game for that one is to take something ugly and make it pretty, but well, I think it's pretty in its own way. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be other people that will too. Let's just say, say it like this, I embrace the ugliness. <laughs> um, thank you for hosting that challenge. And of course, again, I look forward to the next one. You guys know I love challenges. I can't say no to challenges. There's more coming up. Yeah. If you haven't jumped on either of those playlists yet, make sure you do. I will put both challenge playlists in the description below. I think I need coffee. I don't know why I'm recording at this angle, but I am, so have it. Uh, 